We start in India, which continues to see record numbers of new coronavirus cases and deaths. On Sunday, the country's daily coronavirus count was over 400,000 for a fifth consecutive day, and more than 4,000 deaths were reported for a second straight day. India is now recruiting former army doctors to assist hospitals buckling under the strain of the second wave. The country is still facing major medical shortages, especially oxygen. The capital, Delhi, has extended lockdown measures for another week. That includes the suspension of metro services. And that's a situation that has outraged many who rely on public transportation. We will not be able to travel on the metro for our work. And we will face a lot of problems. Why is the government doing this? What is the reason? This should not obstruct what is going on. Why are the metro services being suspended due to the coronavirus? People should control themselves and not step out. I work at a hospital. I'm going for my evening shift now. And how will I return to my home at night? I do not have enough money to travel in cabs. Meanwhile, an editorial published in the peer-reviewed journal The Lancet has slammed Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's handling of the pandemic. It says deaths in the country could reach 1 million by August. The number is currently at about 242,000. If this happens, The Lancet said the Modi government would be responsible for presiding over a self-inflicted national catastrophe. It criticized Modi for squandering early successes and ignoring warnings of a second wave. Our correspondent Shveta Bajaj joins us on the phone from Delhi for more on the situation. Shveta, I mean, these are overwhelming numbers and it must be a very anxious time for many people there. How has your experience been during the second wave? That's right. Anxious time would be an understatement in India at this point in time. Of course, almost every single family has been impacted by the second wave of coronavirus as COVID-19 variant is spreading in India way more contagiously than it did the first right. Round. And this time round, it actually may be uh, dodging vaccine protection. World Health Organization's chief scientist, Swamya, Swaminathan, has warned that the epidemiological features that we see in India today do indicate that it's an extremely rapidly spreading variant. Um, it's, like we just mentioned, India for the first time on Saturday registered more than 4,000 COVID-19 deaths. This happened within just 24 hours. And like you mentioned, that 400,000 figures of new cases going up every day. But even as, you know, in the last two weeks, what we have seen is that the entire system actually failed. The healthcare infrastructure was not ready for it. This time round, the variant has led to a situation where a large amount of oxygen is required in Indian hospitals. Here in Delhi, in a place called Baizag, in Bangalore, in Mumbai, there has been demand of higher amount of oxygen. And we have seen people scrambling, really, for trying to get uh, basics, including basic drugs in the first two weeks, as we reach a point where actually it's just last two days that there has been a sort of a reduction in people on social media asking for beds, ventilators, and asking for other drugs. So there is a slight drop, but nothing to be, uh, nothing to be right now be too positive about. Uh, going ahead, what's going to happen remains to be seen, but at this point in time, uh, there's also talks of a national lockdown. All the states already have increased their lockdowns. The state of Rajasthan has also decided to extend their lockdown to 27th of, of this month. Um, as far as my personal experience is concerned, I had my mother who was suffering from COVID-19. Uh, we were lucky enough to be at home, uh, and she's recovering well. But at a point in time, we did have a situation where we were also scrambling for oxygen as there was a sort of a state of panic which was created by our own Sort of circumstances. Meanwhile, in the middle of pandemic, profiteering continues, and there have been also many cases of scamming. We were also victims of that, and we are not the only ones. There are many people across India that had to go through hardships, and they continue to go through hardships. The, men, the major problem, though, now is in rural India. I'm getting reports from rural India from my own stringers that the situation is so bad there that as this new variant reaches there, there is absolutely no healthcare infrastructure and many people dying because of that. All right, well, Shweta, we're certainly glad to hear that your mother has recovered. Thank you so much for updating us on the situation there. That's Shweta Bajaj uh, in Delhi for us.
China's Red Cross Society has donated 100 oxygen concentrators and 40 ventilators to India. The first batch of medical supplies from the organization arrived on Sunday. The Red Cross is also donating 1 million US dollars to help with pandemic control. Beijing has already sent more than 5,000 ventilators and 20,000 oxygen generators. Countries neighboring India are also seeing a surge in cases and deaths. Nepal reported a fifth consecutive day of more than 8,000 new infections, a huge rise on the kind of numbers that the country was recording in April. In Pakistan, a new lockdown has come into effect for Eid al-Adha, the Muslim holiday which marks the end of Ramadan. They're reported to be the toughest restrictions since last April. Officials in Bangladesh on Saturday said that they detected the country's first case of a highly infectious variant, first identified in India. And this has prompted the government to keep its border with India sealed for another two weeks.